I'm currently on the Grand Union Canal. I've been in and around Braunston for the last week. Um, I'm just about to come up to the junction with uh, Napton Junction. It's the junction with the South Oxford Canal. Uh, not that I'm south of Oxford, but um, I'm actually 50 miles north of Oxford, which is all very confusing really. But the Oxford Canal used to be, used to be one long canal uh, and then at some point the Grand Union Canal um, sort of took over a sort of small section between, between Braunston and Napton Junction, uh, which is a five mile section, uh, which basically divided the Oxford Canal into two, the North Oxford and the South Oxford. So on the left we've got Wigram's Turn Marina and on the right that's the Grand Union and that's the village of Napton, Napton on the hill and this is the other marina here, this is Napton Marina it is certainly very very busy with boats around here and you can see why really I moored overnight before the winding hole, ready to take on the Napton flight of nine in the morning. It's a good job I moored here, as all the mooring further ahead had been taken. This guy kindly opened the gates for me. He wasn't on another boat or anything. I think he was just passing. I love the fact that canal people are so helpful and considerate. Something lost in much of society these days. Well that was very unexpected, at least the, um, the, the gates open and shut and the, uh, very easily and the mechanisms are easy to use but normally the boat gets pushed back but um, it seems on this lock flight possibly they're going to get, the boat's going to come forward very very quickly so we'll have to see how the rest of them go. Does Britain have the best fed ducks in the world, I wonder? I've done the nine locks of the Napton flight this morning. Um, I've just filled up with water. Uh, and now I'm on the summit of the Oxford Canal. Uh, so I guess I think it's all downhill from, from now on. Yeah, those locks are a bit odd actually. Um, it's a pleasure to come across uh, easy to use paddle gear and, um, and, and gates uh, after the Worcester and Birmingham and the Stratford upon Avon and the Grand Union Canal. Um, so that's great, but um, yeah, you know, you've got to let the water in really slowly when you're going up because uh, usually what happens when you're doing a lock is the boat gets pushed backwards to start with and then drifts forward once the water level reaches the top of the sill. But um, it doesn't seem to work like that on these locks. Uh, um, the boat gets pushed back initially, very slightly, and then really slams forward. So uh, if you're on the Oxford Canal, that's something to watch out for. In fact, I was, I was warned about this uh, by one of the viewers on, uh, on Narrowboat Leo. Um, but I forgot to pay any heed to it uh, during that first lock. But anyway, I know for now. Every now and again, a
strange bright white ball appears in the sky and I'm not really sure what it is. I haven't seen an awful lot of it this summer, apart from that week of extremely hot weather. But hey, I'm British. I'm bound to complain about the weather, aren't I? I'm not actually going to go too much further today. I'm going to probably more just around the corner, I think. Um, I want to see if I can try and get a doctor's appointment in the property, which uh, isn't too far away, so uh, hopefully I can get an appointment for early next week. Um, that just kind of means hanging around for a little bit. I'm used to hanging around this year. Don't have to be hanging around here, do the summit reach runs 11 miles between Marston Dolls and Claydon. It's also ludicrously windy. On one section, to travel two and a quarter miles, the canal takes you on a roundabout route of over five and a half miles. Wow, it's busy with boats today, all going in the opposite direction. What do they know that I don't? God blimey, they must have been going at a hell of a lick to get that boat in there. Bovine gun gooslers. Oi, behave! Nice to see belted Galloways. Haven't seen them since I were up north. I'm not surprised she's wrapped up. It's bloody cold and windy for June. And apologies for the wind noise in places. Blue smoke coming from the boat in front. Must mean he's put it hard into reverse. Oh yeah, here he comes. I was unsure what was happening here until I got a toot from the oncoming boat and I acknowledged him and start to reverse too. They weren't too chuffed as the boat ahead had collided with them. And apparently, this boat had lost power. The construction work to the left is for HS2 Railway, which will cross the navigation somewhere around here. Not wishing to politicise my channel, but I firmly believe the North needs better infrastructure. I just don't believe this high-speed railway is the answer, though. After all that open agricultural land, it's nice to see a lovely wooded section by Bridge 132. I've been on the lookout for wood for the winter. It's plentiful on the Shroppy and the Flangotten, but I've seen little since then. Approaching Fanny Compton, where I'll spend the night. 
It always happens, doesn't it? Someone always comes along the minute you've untied the ropes. Funny that. Anyway, I'm just leaving Fenny Compton. I love the name Fenny Compton. Fenny Compton, Fenny Compton, Fenny Compton. I could say it all day. Unfortunately, it's a really crap village. The service area for Fenny Compton Marina is on the right, and I pull in to allow this boat to complete his manoeuvre. There's now a one mile straight, much of which used to be Fenny Compton Tunnel, which has now been opened out. Some of the stretch is quite narrow, and it might be a struggle for two boats to pass. Coming up to one of the many lift bridges on the Oxford Canal, uh, and at least they're called lift bridges and not draw bridges on this canal. A lot of the lift bridges are actually left open on this canal as well. Bridge 142 to the left is not navigable. It's the canal feeder from the reservoir, which is two and a half miles away. It was a pleasure to see so many old working boats on the Grand Union, and it seems there are still quite a few around here on the Oxford too. Now, from where I was, I couldn't see the approaching boat around the bend. It was completely hidden by the overgrown willow tree. Although it doesn't look it here, I was on a really tight bend. There was no way two boats could pass. He was gesticulating me forward, but the tree was frankly far too low. There's a queue at Claydon Toplock. I'm not sure what this guy is up to. Is he clearing something from his prop or measuring the depth of the canal? Who knows? I spent the night on the outskirts of Cropperty and headed off in the morning, having been refused a doctor's appointment. Cropperty, though, is a very pleasant village and home to the famous Fairport Folk Festival. Heading towards the lock, the top gate was opened for me. This old guy likes to help boaters through the lock. And then the crew from the holiday boat behind also lent a helping hand or two. Although the paddle gear on this lock was pretty tight. Just past Cropperty Wharf Bridge are the facilities and I need to fill up with water and dispose of my rubbish.
Some of you may recognise this boat. Yes, it's fellow vlogger Narrowboat Girl. I think this is the fourth time I've come across Emma and Fiona. I gave them a toot, but I don't think they were in at the time. about the derelict Lockies cottage at Borton Lock. Then it was under the M40 motorway. I was chatting to a Scottish couple yesterday at, uh, at a lock and they were asking me about if I'm bored, as you do. Um, and halfway into the conversation the, uh, the woman sort of said to me, uh, do you have a washing machine on board? And I said, well yes I do. And I thought it was a bit of a strange question, but anyway, it was fine, it was okay. Um, but it was only when I was um, getting undressed uh, to go and have a shower at the end of my day's cruising that I realised why she made the comment. The thing is, when you're doing locks on your own, you're climbing in and out of filthy lock chambers, you get in a complete state. And there's no point in changing your clothes every day because they're just going to get muddy. Coming into Banbury now, and just to the right of this bridge, is a large DIY outlet. Very handy. Sovereign Wharf Boatyard and Moorings, and then it's under the bridge into the very centre of Banbury, with shopping malls either side of the canal. You could moor on both sides here, and I think I'm right in saying the moorings are 14 days, which is quite unusual for a town or village centre. Anyway, join me next time when I complete the journey into Oxford. As usual, thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button, that would really help my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you see when I upload new videos. Also, please share on your social media, uh, that will help my channel an awful lot too. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.